Professor Dr. Bandit E. Aporn, Mr. Takuya Shimamura, Professor Dr. Sakapan Sutirat, Mr. Hiroyuki Watanabe. Distinguished guests, good afternoon and welcome to the 29th Special Tulalungkorn University Asahi Glass Foundation Seminar 2021, hosted by Tulalungkorn University. My name is Chutikan Pong Sarat, your MC today. I would like to go over today's agenda briefly. In this event, we will witness virtual MOU signing ceremony, congratulate selected researchers in research grant presentation, attend keynote session, and participate in concurrent sessions in which grantees from previous years will present their research. As you can see, we have a lot to cover today. So I would like to begin by inviting Professor Dr. Sakapan Sutirat, Vice President of Dulalongkorn University, to give a welcome remark. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Swadikap. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Takuya Shimamula, the Chairman of the Asahi Craft Foundation, Professor Bandit Pon, the President of Dulalongkorn University, distinguished guests, colleagues from both sides, Japan and Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, back in 1982, Jurong University received the first support from the Asahi Class Foundation for research. Initially, this support was focused on the research in the field of engineering. Subsequently, it has been expanded to other vital areas, such as environmental science, medical science, pharmaceutical science, and information technology. Why in these years, we can see the support has also opened a new door to the field of social science. Up to now, the findings of these research projects are compiled and published in the support of the Asahi Gas, Gas Foundation for dissemination to various agencies worldwide. Moreover, the seminars have, have been organized regularly over the past 28 years uh, based on the research finding that help providing venues for the exchange of knowledge and expertise among academics, external organizations and agencies in both the government, governmental and private sectors. It's expected that the seminar will promote the application of the research in the industrial sector as well. We are proud that this special seminar mark the 29th of such gathering. We are particularly honored by the present of today's keynote speaker, Professor Kiet Lung Lak Tham, the founder of Jula Vaccine Research Center on the very current topic of Jula COVID-19 mRNA vaccine from bench to clinic and manufacturing. After his lectures, the 15 research papers will be presented, eight projects from the Faculty of Science, four from Faculty of Engineering, the others from Faculty of Medicine, Meteorology and Mineral Science Research Institute, and Institute of Biotechnology and Genetic Engineering. Please allow me to take this opportunity to express our sincere appreciation to the Asahi Craft Foundation, mm -hmm. Japan, for the continuous support for this research project of Jurongon University. We also would like to thank all our researchers who have worked with strong commitment on their research projects that will help elite their teaching and societies. May I now invite Professor Bandit Uaupon, the president of Jurongkorn University, to give an address for opening ceremony. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Takuya Shimamura, chairman of the Asahi Class Foundation, president of AGC Flat Glass Thailand PCL, AGC Chemicals Thailand Company Limited, AGC Automotive Thailand Company Limited. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us through this virtual seminar 
an MOU signing ceremony. It is, of course, disappointing that we are not able in this situation to be together here at Chulalongkorn University. But I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this 29th special Chulalongkorn University and the Asahi Class Foundation seminar virtually, as well as my congratulations to all researchers granted this year. As someone said, the show must go on. The global COVID-19 pandemic might have put the world on pause in many aspects, but not in the area of research. As research and development is one of the major factors in the development of higher education and our country nowadays, we are gearing towards a knowledge-based global community and creative economy. Therefore, the research for new knowledge and technological advancement is indispensable and must be carried out in view of particular needs and practical uses on both national and global level. The research project revealing in the keynote lecture sessions is one of the great examples of this ongoing research and development. It should also be emphasized here that research in university can both enhance and enrich our teaching to be more up-to-date and relevant to the contemporary and sustainable society. However, Chulalongkorn University cannot achieve these goals without the long support from our previous partners like this, the RCE Class Foundation. For 40 years, the university has been receiving continuous and generous support from the Asahi Class Foundation of Japan, which enable us to promote various impactful research works. Amid the outbreak of COVID-19, it is extraordinarily important that this virtual seminar takes place. This CUAF seminar is organized to showcase the research projects supported by the Asahi Class Foundation. This also allows researchers to publicize their findings and to exchange idea among the distinguished audience. I am confident that this kind of academic exchange will greatly contribute to the existing body of knowledge and enhance the atmosphere of intellectual spirit. I would like to take this opportunity to express my warmest thanks to the Asahi Class Foundation for the generous support for nearly four decades. As the new MOU between two organizations are signing, my firm belief has been ensured that the relationship between us will be even stronger in the future. I would like to express my best wishes for the success of this event and hope that the seminar as well as the virtual MOU signing ceremony will achieve all of its goals. May I take this opportunity to declare the 29th special seminar open. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Bandit Laapon for an inspiring and warming address and in, as this event is a collaboration between two countries, it would be incomplete to start without a greeting from Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the Asahi Glass Foundation is here with us today. Please welcome Mr. Takuya Shimamura. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. And also I appreciate the very impressive express the president uh, I'm very impressed. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Takuya Shimamura. I'm chairman of the Asahi Glass Foundation and chairman of AGC Inc. It's both honor 
and pleasure for me to be this ceremony as a representative of Asahi Glass Foundation in Japan. And also, I appreciate even under the very hard condition of COVID-19, a lot of people can gather, join this uh, very, very precious moment. Once again, I appreciate. Thank you very much. Firstly, please allow me to extend my sincere gratitude to Professor Vaidid Urapan, President of University, Professor Chakafan Stifila, Vice President, Professor Kiat Luxung Sam, our keynote speakers, our distinguished guests and members hosting today's ceremony. Thank you very much. Secondary, let me introduce Masai Grass Foundation briefly. It was established in 1933 to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the fund funding of the Asai Glass Company Limited. Asai Glass Company Limited was renamed into the AGC Inc. in 2018. Now we provide three major programs, such as a research grant program, scholarship program, and commendation program named Blue Planet Prize. In addition, we have publicized an annual survey on the global environment named Environment Doomsday Clock. In terms of the relationship between AGC Inc. and Thailand, in 1964, AGC began to produce flat glass in Thailand and expanding its business to automotive glass, chemicals, and electronics materials. Today, annual sales of AGC Inc. is worldwide almost 15 billion US dollars. And we operate more than 30 countries worldwide and more than 50,000 our associates work together. And we cover from the such a commoditized product of flat grass up to the very high end uh, technology uh, products such as uh, biochemicals products and other electronics programs. So today total annual sales revenue of the group in Thailand is approximately 284 billion Thai or 9.4 billion US dollars. And many alumni of the Cheraloncon University have joined AGC Flat Grass Thailand, AGC Chemicals Thailand, and so on. In 1982, AGC Asai Glass Foundation initiated a grant program with Cheraloncon University, consecutive 40 years. So this year is the 14th grand presentation, presentation ceremony. So AGC Inc. and Asai Glass Foundation have a long, long history with Thailand and Hong Kong University as well. We have supported more than 300 grant themes and contributed approximately three 2.3 million US dollars from the beginning. I believe these researches can contribute enough for the development and prosperity of Thailand. We wish our support can be helpful for all researchers. As one of the major activities of foundation, we provide Blue Planet Prize from 1992 which has become internationally recognized award successfully. The foundation has awarded the Blue Planet Prize to two people who have made outstanding contributes 
towards solving global environmental issues with a certificate of merit, commemorative trophies, and 50 million Japanese yen or 450,000 US dollars per each in prize money. Professor David Tillman and Dr. Simon Stewart were winners in 2020. And Professor Vera Vatoran Ramanasan from United States and Professor Mohan Munashinge from Sri Lanka this year. Usually we have we held the ceremony uh, in Japan, Tokyo in autumn every year. Unfortunately, uh, past two years, including this year, we have to had to cancel, postpone the ceremony itself because of the COVID. I hope this condition will be clear as soon as possible. And we want to invite such uh, uh, winners in Tokyo uh, to celebrate their contributions. And please uh, visit our website, which explain the winner's achievement in detail. And you can also reach the names and research themes of this year's new grantees and research report of the past year's grantees. As you know, our uh, environment situation is getting worse every year. Humankind have sacrificed its environment ex in exchange for its prosperity. That is the reason why we established the Blue Planet Prize. I hope the winner of this prize from Thailand will be awarded someday. I hope the young researchers can success and also make a good progress of the contribution and research goals. And uh, uh, I hope they can get this prize in future. I sincerely hope all researchers here can contribute to our precious blue planet through your researches. Once again, I'd like to express my deepest appreciation to Professor Bandito Urapan, Professor Chakafan Stira, Professor Kyato Luxungun-san, and our distinguished guest, the member hosting today's ceremony, and all members concerned kindly supported the seminar and award ceremony as well. As closing my speech, I'd like to express the following. I firmly believe in for all of you today, your future is bright. Your potential is unlimited. And also your possibilities are endless. Thank you very much for your attention. Takuya Shimamura, Chairman of the Asahi Grass Foundation, August 25th, 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chimamura. It's a great pleasure to have you here with us today. And that was a very lovely speech. Thank you so much for being here. Now, as listed on our agenda, we are about to witness a truly important moment of MOU signing. This memorandum of understanding is a triennial agreement for the years 2022 to 2024. And that details the extension of kind support the Asahi Glass Foundation, or now the AJC Inc. Group, offers to Tulalongan University and hence will definitely strengthen the bond between the two parties even more. In this occasion, I would like to invite the following persons to sign the MOU. Professor Dr. Bandit Aapon, President of Jalalongan University, and Mr. Takuya Shimamura, Chairman of the Asahi Glass Foundation. 
I would also like to invite the following persons to be the official witnesses of the signing of MOU. Professor Dr. Chakrapan Sutirat, Vice President of Jolalongkorn University, and Mr. Hiroyuki Watanabe, Senior Executive Director of the Asahi Gas Foundation. Right. Now, could you please sign the MOU and then present the agreement to the audience? That's right. And now that the MOUs are signed, I believe we can be confident that more good things are to be expected as a result of this strong relationship. Thank you very much. All right. And speaking of the good thing from this collaboration, of course, the most obvious evidence is the success of the research grant program. This year, 12 grants have been awarded. And so in the following session, allow me to introduce to you the 12 grantees of this year. And, okay, so now you're about to meet the 12 grantees. The first grantee I would like to call on is Dr. Pio Miatu from the Institute of Asian Studies. Next in line, we have Dr. Patarin Tangtanatagun from the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences. We also have Dr. Dr. Wangapon Shaikiratisa, who unfortunately could not make it today for he has an academic duty to attend. But yes, he is on our list and congratulations to him from us here. Next, we also have Dr. Nat Songwarawit from the Faculty of Science. Next, we have Dr. Mananya Okavilai from Metallurgy and Material Science Research Institute. Followed by Dr. Sarapat Niyomsin from the Petroleum and Petrochemical College. We also have Assistant Professor Dr. Sawik Shai Tang Aramwong from the Faculty of Engineering. Next, Assistant Professor Dr. Dao Suwansen from the Faculty of Engineering. We also have Dr. Jitti Kasim Shainan from the Faculty of Science. Also on this list, Dr. Ten Yuk Lo Watsarin from the Faculty of Engineering. Next, followed by Dr. Manatsawi Sutipong from the Faculty of Science. Last but not least, Dr. Yotwadi Hatwangzu from Aquatic Resources Research Institute. Congratulations to the 12 grantees today. We are looking forward to hearing about your success. Now, could everyone please present your certificate? Hold it up on you, like in your body line, so that we can take a screen capture of everyone here. Okay, please hold up your certificates. That's right. And our team would like to take a screen capture. This is a new new style of taking a virtual group photo, right? So that's right. Please smile. Hold on. Yes. Thank you. Okay. That that's right. Thank you so much. Now please remain in your positions and congratulations once again. Although we are some some of us are muted, we are assured that we are clapping very loud and clear for all of you. So congratulations. Now please remain in your position and we would like to have a virtual group photo with our honorable guests today. So for the first group photo, may I invite Professor Dr. Bandit Aapon, Mr. Takuya Shimamura, Professor Dr. Tsakapan Sutirat, and Mr. Hiroyuki Watanabe to join the grantees in this virtual group photo. It would be a great honor. Right, okay. Are we all set for this is the first virtual group photo with our honorable guests. So we would take a screenshot on the count of three in one, two, three, smile. Please present your certificates. Yes, 
Can we have one more picture? Just to be safe. All right. Three, two, one. Yes, that's right. That's great. Okay. Now, we would also like to invite our honorable guests from Japan who will be joining us in this group photo session as well. Okay, so, so please kindly everyone, please remain in your positions as I invite our guests to join. All right, so um, may I invite Mr. Suneo Manabe, director of Asahi Glass Foundation, Japan. I would also like to invite Mr. Shin Tatematsu, Director of Asahi Glass Foundation, Japan. Mr. Daikichi Arai, President of AJC Flat Glass Thailand, Public Company Limited. Also, I would like to extend my invite to Mr. Takeshi Yamaguchi, President of AJC Automotive Thailand. Mr. Masahiko Fukamachi, President of AJC Chemicals Thailand. Also, we have Mr. Chuiti Ikuchi, Project Director of Vini Thai Public Company Limited. Also, Mr. Masayuki Nakagawa from AJC Group Network Manager, AGN. I would also like to invite Ms. Kumi Araki, Secretary from AGC Japan, and Dr. Hidefumi Odaka, Executive Director, Strategic Planning and Business Development Division from AGC Asia Pacific, Singapore. It's a great honor for us too to have all of you here today. And I would like to remind you to please make sure that you are in the center of your camera so that we can capture you nicely. So, all right, so in this, okay, so in this next session, okay, please smile and we will take a virtual group photo in three, two, one, smile. That's right, that's great. Okay, that would be nice. Okay, so, now that we've captured a very, very memorable moments of our grantees with our honorable guests, I would like to remind that the following session will be a keynote speech session. And now, uh, thank you very much for joining in this virtual photo session. Coming up next is a keynote session. Now, as I've already mentioned a little bit about the topic, we all know that the coming up session will be the hot issue of today's world. Now we are going to learn more about Thailand's vaccine and how it is going to be. So today we are going to learn about this new vaccine, Chula COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. We will learn about the development from bench to clinic and manufacturing. And today our keynote speaker is Professor Dr. Kiet Rakrung Tham, the Scientific Chair of Jula Vaccine Research Center. And he is here with us today right now, ladies and gentlemen. Please give him a warm welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my great honor and privilege to, to be a keynote speaker of this uh, very uh, privileged uh, session and symposium. So what I'm going to spend in the next 20 minutes is the uh, to update the audience about uh, our July COP19 mRNA vaccine development. I think we are all have seen the figure rising up every day, and this is just the confirmed cases. I checked it this morning. So if more than 213 million uh, people confirm infected uh, uh, and, and with the COVID-19 disease, and more than 4.4 million people die. And if you average every hour, every life, uh, more than 400 lives lost every hour. So I think it's really just not only a number, it's really uh, a, a serious pandemic and then keep going on maybe another uh, couple more years. One of the, there's many, many, uh, 
record breaking uh, phenomenon during this pandemic in this uh, in this group uh, particularly in the area of vaccine development never before in the history of human that just only again one disease many scientists many biotech company and research institute and university uh, start developing more than 200 vaccine uh, under development and at least you know right now probably more than 150 vaccine in clinical trial so the whole re- the world record is really uh, a very high speed of vaccine development uh, a high number of uh, vaccine and type uh, technology platform the efficacy is phenomenal is much higher than influenza vaccine that we have uh, seen every year it's only 40 to 60 percent efficacy and the rolling out globally also amazing it's, it's really i'm going to show you the the data very very soon but inequity remain a problem and this is the technology platform uh, entering phase three and and several of them has been approved for emergency use authorization and the good news is at least one vaccine and an mRNA vaccine Pfizer has been fully approved in the US uh, uh, yesterday or uh, a day before. So we have viral vector, also well in new technology, never before has been approved for human use. We have AstraZeneca in this group, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Gemalaya from, from, uh, from uh, Russia. And we have uh, mRNA vaccine, at least two of them has been used and uh, Pfizer and Moderna. We have uh, inactivated the vaccine and we have protein subunit vaccine. And uh, a week ago, this is also another uh, phenomenon that the new technology DNA vaccine has been approved in India. So new three technology, viral vector, mRNA and DNA vaccine. As I mentioned that the viral effic- uh, the vaccine efficacy in the phase three trial is really very impressive, particularly if you look at the, the last column of this table, summarized table, you see that all vaccine, no matter what technology platform, can prevent us from severe disease and death up to 100%. It's really de- depend on the durability of antibody, but uh, during the uh, first six months is very effective. After six to eight months, we start to see the drop of the protection. Uh, of course, the, 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 the magnitude of response is different. So it prevents clinical symptoms are different, rarely from 50% up to 95% efficacy. As I mentioned a bit earlier that uh, more than, this is data a bit, uh, you know, few days ago, but you can check from the Bloomberg vaccine tracker, vaccination tracker, I would say that up to 5 billion P, uh, uh, vaccine chart has been done globally. Uh, about, uh, you know, one fourth is uh, mRNA vaccine very in developing, in developed world or wealthy world. Inactivated uh, vaccine is many country, particularly the, the, the main supplier from China and India and viral vector. And uh, 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 the average is about up to 40 million people vaccinated per day. Of course, when you vaccinate millions of people, you start to see some of the you know, rare immediate reaction or rare adverse event. The phenomenon that that uh, 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 incident is about one out of uh, one to five per million injection. So every one million or every 200,000, you might see some uh, unexpected uh, rare uh, adverse event. The problem is inequity. You look at this summary chart uh, uh, from uh, our our world data, you see that uh, rarely from the coverage of the population, rarely from 70% at least had been vaccinated one dose down to in African continent less than 5%, actually it's only one to 2% people get access to vaccine. And the further challenge is keep coming because we thought that in the wealthy world like US, Europe, you know, uh, UK, uh, when they finish up the two doors, 
probably vaccine will be more exported to many other parts of the world, but it might, may not be the case because what? The first thing is that uh, the booster dose uh, start to be approved in the US and, and uh, probably in next uh, couple of weeks will be in Europe and, and uh, in UK and now also in Israel. So, so people will use and more of vaccine in the wealthy country. And, uh, and Pfizer now become the first COVID vaccine gain fully full approval by the US FDA. So I think the requirement uh, in the wealthy country will be more. Um, in the, 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 the good news for Thai uh, scientific uh, uh, ecosystem in the last decade is that uh, a number of university and research institute and, and, and the Thai company like GPO and also the Thai biotech company vaccine like Bionet Asia also have their own vaccine uh, development ongoing. And, and interesting, almost every technology platform. So I put it in, in red, it means the platform that already entering clinical trial are about to enter uh, a clinical trial. So you see the mRNA, this is what I'm going to uh, cover in the next uh, 10 more minutes. And, and the BioNet DNA vaccine will be test phase one in Australia. Uh, GPO had been tested phase one, start to phase, phase two to uh, uh, a few days ago, we go, our vaccine will start phase two tomorrow. Uh, Baya is a subunit uh, protein, a startup company uh, from uh, Chulalongkorn University, about to start uh, phase one uh, next next month. So I have been asked from both the local media and the international media that, are, are you sure that you still really need uh, to make uh, your homegrown vaccine, uh, it's too late because uh, they kept saying this may be too late because many country, they, they can make vaccine and, and can, can make billion of doses. I, we definitely say that not at all. If we are giving up this time, the next pandemic on the next variant coming, we have to wait to buy only. So we're going to be a buyer and waiting for nothing to come for few months or years. And we, saw, we have seen many, even wealthy country in this region cannot get vaccine because it, there's no supplying. Okay, so we believe that completing capacity uh, to complete our capacity and value chain, development value chain and manufacturing chain is very critical. And we expect that if each technology platform in Thailand can make at least 30 million dollars per year then we can be more self-dependent uh, for the next pandemic, also for the next variant to come. And uh, when, when we start developing MR technology, remember that this platform haven't been approved in human before. It has been tested in clinical trial, but none have been approved. So, so we don't know yet whether it's going to work. The good thing for us, uh, although we're far behind a year, is the two biotech company has been had proven that this technology is really one of the outstanding vaccine technology. It's the highest efficacy and and uh, and lasts longer. And I will show you that it's also be able to cover cross neutralize many variants that are happening right now. Now let me focus on uh, um, uh, a knowledge a bit and 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 also try to make the public understanding about messenger RNA, when talking about anything about genetics, uh, genetic material, people will be scaring. But if you search Google right now, each of yourself already make your own mRNA, messenger RNA, at least 300,000 messenger RNA types per cell, per cell, so a lot. Why? Because you have DNA, you, everyone have our own DNA, you know, you, you have dark hair, you have dark eye, you have, you know, white color skin, or you, you, you speak differently, you walk differently. This is determined by your gene or DNA, but your DNA won't be able to work unless you'll be able to make protein. The way to the biology cells, every cell, living cell to make protein, you need what we call the message. So this is the uh, genetic message. It's a transient message 
that when you I'm talking right now, you're listening right now, you're working right now, you're playing, uh, you know, football or, or uh, tennis, whatever. Every time you uh, your cell, your body working, you need protein. Different protein, maybe ten of thousand protein working now, and you see different color, right? Protein. So different mRNA. mRNA is really short lived. If the, you make protein in the brain, it's going to maybe a few seconds, a minute have to be eliminated because you cannot have a lot of stimulant in the brain all the time. You will be getting, you know, like a, a madness and, and, and bizarre behavior. So, so mRNA is a short message and we will allow our body to make protein and normally will be eliminated in second minute or hours or day, depend on the type of mRNA. So now the scientists very really smart think about, hey, why, why we have to make vaccine outside our body? Why don't we use a synthesize a very really short message and, and allow ourselves to make a COVID protein, just a very really short protein, the spike protein. If you remember the, the COVID virus is like a, a, a ball and then you have a, a pin, you know, uh, uh, so allow it. And that's just a, that protein. Every you make this protein, our body will, will recognize it. And this type of protein will be short-lived, right? uh, messenger RNA. So this is just an example from the uh, uh, Pfizer uh, uh, phase three paper published in New England Journal. You see that this is a short message. This sequence, it uh, tell our body to make spike protein. And it cannot get into the cell nicely, so you need the help with the lipid nanoparticle. When you inject to our body, it gets to the cell, but not into your nucleus. It just at the factory of the cell, we call the ribosome. And this mRNA will stay less than three to six days. So in our vaccine, we also test in animal. Uh, within three to six days, everything disappears. So this protein, this spike protein, will train our body immune system, B cell to make antibody, and T cell to make killer cell. When you see the real virus, we can fight really quickly and clean it up. Now, this is the, uh, a, a number of advantages of mRNA vaccine technology. The faster design with no need of to grow the virus, but the production cost in long term will be lower and lower and induce high antibody and T cell response. I'm going to show you both in animal and in human trial. This ideal technology can allow you to change your, your uh, uh, vaccine design when you see the virus changing is a new variant really easily and really quickly. Uh, everything, I think, uh, thanks to the Chula Longkorn University, the Second Century Fund, thanks to the medical school that allow us to have you know, lab space and, and people to work. So we, I, I and my team has found and set up the clinical vaccine research center, Chula vaccine, a decade ago. So we accumulate our knowledge, skill, and technology up until we have a good friend. We have been working on protein vaccine. We have working on, on, uh, on a DNA vaccine and subunit vaccine and viral life particle until we met the great scientist, I'm going to uh, name his name in the next uh, few slides, that uh, Eman is the best. And, and then so we go with that. And this is the, the data that uh, before you go into human, you have to prove that your vaccine really work in small animal. This is a two dose immunization. After the second dose, uh, two weeks after the second dose, you look at the titles, really, really high title, 40,000. This means that uh, the blood in the animal after vaccinated with Tula uh, COP19 mRNA vaccine can induce antibody in the serum. If you, you have to dilute it out up to 40,004 and the antibody that your blood, the animal uh, uh, antibodies still able to block the virus in, in vitro. And we confirm this again in, in monkey and the title is about 5,000. And when you look at the data in human, in the, in the past, we believe that, um, you know, anything work in mice, it doesn't mean that it have to work in monkey. Anything work in monkey, it might not work in human. But COVID vaccine is different. Everything we have seen in mice and monkey, 
is confirming human. I'm going to share with you in the next uh, few minutes. And we also have looked at this, how long this vaccine can last after two-dot immunization. Because right now, we have heard that you need third dose after six to eight months uh, because the antibody dropping, uh, because we're seeing a new variant that very uh, highly uh, infectious, like a Delta variant. You see that this is the cutoff based on uh, a published paper that if any antibody in, mo in monkey above 50, tighter, so 50, it means it's work, okay? It can protect the animal. So you look at the drop because every time immune system cannot stay too long, they have to drop and wait as a memory and wait for the, the, your enemy, the new virus coming in and you fight back very quickly. So uh, otherwise your body will make a lot of antibody and, and the blood will be very whisk, viscous and, and you run into trouble. So it dropped, but see at six months is still above two, four above the protective level. So it means probably it should be similar in human will be more than six to eight months that you need another boost. We also have done the protection assay, we call the challenge assay. So this is a special uh, uh, mice. This is collaborating with the uh, uh, Thai US Army uh, Research Institute we call AFRIMS. And uh, so we ordered the transgenic mice. So this mice is very special, can be infected uh, by uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So in blue is the, the animal that vaccinated with the Jula cov 19 In orange is the control, just a lipid uh, coat only. And, and we compare the low dose, one microgram and 10 microgram. After two dose uh, immunization, uh, two weeks later, we challenged with the uh, white high Wuhan virus, uh, uh, this uh, dose. And at day six, the control arm gets six, almost dying. Uh, so at day six, we check everything. So the vaccine be able to prevent 100% uh, COVID symptom, prevent bulimia in the blood, virus in the blood, 100%, and reduce infection in the nose, in the lung, more than seven or eight lots. So it's more than 100 uh, uh, million four. And induce very strong antibody response. Now, the challenge is the valence. You look at alpha, beta, gamma, and delta everywhere. But the most serious one and, and, and you know, hit back after six or eight months of many countries that had been vaccinated with Pfizer and Moderna, but it's getting worse right now because of the drop of antibody and delta is, is uh, you know, e easy to escape the vaccine if the title is dropping. So how are we going to cope with the valence? Now, this data, uh, again, I will, I, this, and you, if you remember this data in mice, we're going to see the very similar data in human. So we asked the question whether our Jula COP-19 first generation induced strong antibody high enough to cross-protect other valent. The answer is yes. If you look at here, this is the in monkey, you see, uh, this is white high, alpha, delta, still, in the red line is the protection level. And in my is the dose dependent. The higher dose, you can cross, neutralize beautifully in, in, in my. So, so it means that at least over first generation will help us to prevent people from all valence with the proper dose. Now, uh, in the next uh, few more minutes, I'm going to share with you uh, the most update uh, phase one result. So everyone worked very hard. We are a small center and we have a, a good clinical team in the medical school and hospital. So we work very hard, uh, but, you know, like big company, but we are very small. Um, so this is a phase one result. First of all, I'd like to thank all from our bottom of our heart uh, to all the volunteers. Even today, I, 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 I go to the trial vaccines, trial clinic, uh, elder people also come as a volunteer and, and immunize. So we thanks all uh, very good heart of them and thank you very much. And many of them still line up for phase two and, and the future phase three is trial. And collaboration is not only within Chula, outside Chula with the biotech company in Thailand, with our good friend in Japan, 
and and also the strong support both from the university and or from the dean of our medical school. We have a every week a, a, a meeting with the dean to to solve a number of problems, and this is a, a great clinical team. Uh, actually, more than fifty members, but I, I just have to uh, show a few of them. And and the opportunity that we have right now. Remember, if we we if the whole world didn't have approved vaccine yet, we don't have a competitor. Now, we be able to compare our vaccine phase one with Pfizer, with AstraZeneca, with Sinovac by using a, a cohort. So uh, at the time we start our trial, five, Pfizer is not available yet in, in Thailand. So I collaborate with my good friend in U of Malaya, Professor Adiba. So she, so we send them, she send her the uh, protocol that uh, pre use the same protocol uh, vaccination uh, uh, Pfizer with uh, to collecting the clinical sample. So so we have the all clinical sample and we be do the lab test head to head at the same time. And this is uh, uh, our good friend Professor Du Weisman. Uh, he is uh, one of the pioneer of mRNA uh, uh, vaccine development. And this is the interview he and myself interview to. FOP News and uh, Nature News. And we have the same uh, mentality or mission that we would love to have the technology uh, be available for low income country in the long term. And this is uh, uh, Drew and, and her, uh, his uh, you know, partner, uh, Kathleen, that uh, both uh, uh, discover this uh, technology and, and they got vaccinated by their own technology and uh, uh, you know, at the same time. So we start our first in human uh, 14 June uh, last month. And uh, the first one of young generation 18 to 55 is uh, complete. So I'm going to present to you. The elder we still ongoing and we are about to start uh, phase two uh, uh, tomorrow. So to, 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 to briefly summarize that this, uh, this is a small sample size. Uh, we didn't see any serious adverse event. Uh, it's, uh, injection side pain, very mild, very common uh, for every vaccine when you put the needle in, uh, uh, into your arm, it's always pain. And the transient mind to moderate adverse effect. So it's uh, most of the fatigue, uh, some of them have fever and muscle pain uh, gone within less than two and a half days. Uh, and, and as a small proportion. Now, let's look at the antibody. Remember that I showed you the, the antibody in mice. Uh, in the past, for many other vaccines and other technology, we said that mice sometimes is not successful in, in human, but you see a very confirmed pattern, pattern of response. This is the antibody response. So I, I, I don't want to go into the technical term, but it's the antibody response uh, to the RBD. Low dose is come up slower. It take uh, day 50 to get to the peak. But the high dose, only uh, uh, one week after the second dose, you get to the peak. And even higher than Pfizer. You look at Pfizer, the peak at, uh, at the 88,000. 8, so we have uh, 17,000. Uh, and when we, we assay another tech, uh, assay, lab assay, this is the blocking uh, antibody. So it turn, results as a percent inhibition. The, the total inhibition is 100% inhibition. You look at Julacop-19, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Sinovac. 94% exactly inhibit blocking. So this is not efficacy. Inhibit binding protein. Uh, uh, so, so this is very high response. And we also observe the same thing. Uh, let, let me emphasize that we believe that our data is not biased because a number of assays, we didn't do it over our labs. So we have the third party doing for it. And this set is Professor Aluni from uh, Virology Lab at, at the Faculty of Science, Mahidon University. So it turned out similar to what we have seen in monkey. So you have the title again, uh, white height, Wuhan strain, and then you still cross protect. Again, it dropped, but it's still high enough to cross protect alpha, beta, and delta. 
And we also uh, send our uh, antibody test using another technology. The previous one is using live virus culture. The, this one is using pseudo virus uh, title. Uh, this is from the lab and sorry, they, I forgot to uh, use another slide that have his, his name and his face on. It's uh, Dr. Anan. He's a, a, a biology app expert in, in uh, biotech NASDA. So you see the same phenomenon, very high in white high, drop a bit on alpha, drop a bit on delta and drop a lot in beta and gamma, but it's still above the protection level. So, so it means our vaccine can cross protect all valent that we're concerning right now. And how about T cell? Remember I talking about when you produce protein in your body or inject protein from outside and then your body, you have two types of your, your army. One is a B cell to, in, to produce antibody. The other one is the T cell, we call T cell to be a killer cell when your body get infection, this will clean up the infected cell. So we call the T cell. So the T cell, you look here, just look at this uh, uh, figure, this example of uh, individuals. Uh, this is the baseline before vaccinate vaccine. This is after vaccinate vaccine. You stimulate uh, the cell with uh, a protein, the COVID spike protein. If it respond, you have a lot of spot compared to passive control. So this individual, this another participant, another participant is very strong response. And to to make it easier to present, you see that low dose, you you got everyone got T cell response. Mid dose very beautifully, and higher dose is not pushing any further. So T cell response is 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 maybe plateau at uh, twenty five microgram, but B cell, the higher dose you have. And you look at this, the stat is better than Pfizer. But again, it's small sample size to uh, it and not published data yet. So this is just a very uh, uh, preliminary interim analysis. Now this yeah, is the whole, yeah, this is the whole, um, the whole lot map uh, that I'm have shown you that this July COP nineteen mRNA vaccine induced very strong antibody in in small animal in mice and then confirm in monkey. And we have start uh, looking at the uh, toxicity of everything good. And so at the time that technology is not transferred to Thailand yet. So we have to hire uh, CMO uh, to make vaccine for us. This is a two company in California making uh, the first batch of vaccine for phase one, two trial. And in the meantime, that all the technology already transferred to the Thai vaccine manufacturer. Uh, located in Ayutthaya. This is a, this, vac this vaccine company, Bionet Asia, is a Thai French company. The major holder is a Thai and then has been uh, uh, as a vaccine developer in the last uh, two decades. So they're capable to do protein vaccine, DNA vaccine, and now they got the technology of DNA vaccine. So we expect to make a large scale uh, uh, production by early next year, but this the, the scale for phase three trial by October uh, this year. And we're also working on the second and third generation vaccine, again, the valence. Now this is the step, the, there's more step to go. So we, we have phase one, phase two, and we have to go to phase three. So I thank you, I thank you very much for your kind attention. Sorry, uh, some interruption. So I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Kiat Rakrungham, for an informative and interesting session. I can truly say that we are very excited to see how like the performance in the long term and with like bigger, bigger um, target, um audience and groups. We would we would love to see how this vaccine will turn out. And we truly hope that it will be very, very um effective towards COVID-19 across like any variant. So thank you very much for sharing this with us today. Thank you very much. And, yes. and the AGC and, Inc. provide the uh, CDMO business worldwide. Mm -hmm. And also we produce the plasmid DNA. Thank you, thank you very much. That's very so something, good if you have something, uh, please uh, uh, don't hesitate, ask us. Yeah, definitely. I will. I will contact you. Thank yeah. you very much. 
Thank you very much. Very impressed. And uh, I uh, uh, hope your uh, challenging be uh, successful. Thank you. Thank you for your kind, uh, you know. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you if very you much. If you need your support on the on the raw material production, we will contact you definitely. Uh, yeah, we already provide the uh, product site in US, Japan, and Europe. Okay. And we can serve the same quality and control. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's why uh, now I cannot say the uh, no specific name of the our customers, but uh, uh, a lot of uh, pharmaceutical uh, company request us to uh, produce this uh, plasmidal DNA. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, that is uh, providing us a very good opportunity. If it is yep. possible, then Professor Kiat could uh, contact yep. to ATC, perhaps right. uh, through somebody uh, in Thailand and then linked yeah. to what the chairman mentioned. Right. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. It's a good opportunity for us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. It's a very good Thank opportunity you. for all in this case. I am sure. Thank you so much. And this marked the end of the event in the main room session. Thank you all for attending. And coming up next is a concurrent session. So um, allow me to remind you that um, in this session, the speakers are like former grantees of this program, and they will present the research findings. So if you're interested in which particular, kindly join the breakout rooms. Um, for that particular researchers. With two breakout rooms, the links to each room can be found in the chat of Zoom meeting. And you can also um, save the file. We also sent you the manual, which is a PDF file in the chat. Once you save it, you can also switch between the two rooms on your own account. So two hyperlinks can be accessed on the Zoom chat, um, sorry, on the PDF file. So if you would like to manage your own experience, I highly recommend you to save that PDF file. And that is the end for today's session. Should we take a photo session. together? <laughs> yes, I would love to do that. Yeah, I, I would love to, you know, to have a photo right. with our president sure. and our colleague of and the chairperson, yeah, please. I would need to remind the, oh, okay. So I remind the audience already. So that was what is coming up next in the chat that you see. So you know what is in the chat. Now, before we like dismiss this session, can we please have a group photo session? Okay, Um, can we please arrange this? So the first photo, can we have um our honorable guests first? And if possible, Sorry. I would like to ask the grantees to join in as well. Excuse me, Dam. Yes. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Maybe uh, Shimamura-san will leave for another meeting. So maybe if you come, you have to take this photos. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. Let's yes, all can, together, please. Yeah. please. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, this time we cannot meet you in person. I mean, actually, <laughs> we love to meet you in person. <laughs> I hope we can meet a uh, really base in as soon as possible. Hopefully sure. in Taiwan. <laughs> okay, yeah, good, we look good. forward to receiving you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please do visit us if it is possible. Oh well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> right. In fact, you can come to, to Phuket Island nowadays. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we will take a quick screenshot to take this virtual photo. Okay, so we are ready in three, two, one. Okay, that is great. That will be all. Thank, thank you, you much. so much for joining yeah, us today. You. Yeah, everyone so take care and stay safe. Yeah, uh, bye now. Bye now. Thank, uh, you. thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the rest of the you day. Thank you. As well. all, all the yeah, best. Yeah. Best wishes. Thank you very much today, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Mr. Chairman. And this goes to all participants. If you haven't joined the breakout room sessions yet, this is your opportunity. Thank you so much for attending this seminar and I hope you enjoy the rest of this seminar. It's been a pleasure serving you and have a nice day. Sawadee